Good morning, left libertarian. The voice you will hear for the next 88 minutes or so belongs to me, Mike Gogolsky. I am a stateless ex-American. I renounced my American citizenship in 2008, and I have been a voluntary exile since 2004, presently living in Bratislava, Slovakia. As of this recording in June 2009, I maintain a website at www.nostate.com, which you are invited to visit. The words you will hear belong to all of humanity, but they were written by Kevin Carson, a leading contemporary thinker in mutualism and individualist anarchism, and research associate for the Center for a Stateless Society, c4ss.org. The essay, The Iron Fist Behind the Invisible Hand, Corporate Capitalism as a State Guaranteed System of Privilege, was published in 2001 and is available online at Carson's Mutualist blog, mutualist.org, from flag.blackened.net, and from Red Lion Press in print form. For the recording, I have broken the essay into ten parts. Introduction, The Subsidy of History, Ideological Hegemony, the Money Monopoly, Patents, Infrastructure, Military Keynesianism, Other Subsidies, Political Repression, and finally, Conclusion. I have attempted to read the text of Iron Fist as I have it in hand. Any deviations from the written text are my own. It is worth noting for more mainstream libertarians and others not familiar with Carson's work that one need not adopt Carson's mutualism or his predictions regarding profit, rent, and interest in a truly free market in order to find the analysis and historiography contained here of great value. The Iron Fist Behind the Invisible Hand Corporate Capitalism as a State Guaranteed System of Privilege by Kevin A. Carson Part 1. Introduction. Manorialism, commonly, is recognized to have been founded by robbery and usurpation. A ruling class established itself by force, and then compelled the peasantry to work for the profit of their lords. But no system of exploitation, including capitalism, has ever been created by the action of a free market. Capitalism was founded on an act of robbery, as massive as feudalism. It has been sustained to the present by continual state intervention to protect its system of privilege, without which its survival is unimaginable. The current structure of capital ownership and organization of production in our so-called market economy reflects coercive state intervention prior to and extraneous to the market. From the outset of the Industrial Revolution, what is nostalgically called laissez-faire was in fact a system of continuing state intervention to subsidize accumulation, guarantee privilege, and maintain work discipline. Most such intervention is tacitly assumed by mainstream right libertarians as part of a market system. Although a few intellectually honest ones, like Rothbard and Hess, were willing to look into the role of coercion in creating capitalism, the Chicago School and the Randroids take existing property relations and class power as a given. Their ideal free market is merely the current system minus the progressive regulatory and welfare state, i.e. 19th century robber baron capitalism. But genuine markets have a value for the libertarian left, and we shouldn't concede the term to our enemies. In fact, capitalism, a system of power in which ownership and control are divorced from labor, could not survive in a free market. As a mutualist anarchist, I believe that expropriation of surplus value, i.e. capitalism, cannot occur without state coercion to maintain the privilege of usurer, landlord, and capitalist. It was for this reason that the free market mutualist Benjamin Tucker, from whom right libertarians selectively borrow, regarded himself as a libertarian socialist. It is beyond my ability or purpose here to describe a world where a true market system could have developed without such state intervention. A world in which peasants had held onto their land and property was widely distributed, capital was freely available to laborers through mutual banks, productive technology was freely available in every country without patents, and every people was free to develop locally without colonial robbery is beyond our imagination. 
but it would have been a world of decentralized, small-scale production for local use, owned and controlled by those who did the work, as different from our world as day from night or freedom from slavery.